That's right. This is Let's Talk on KWMR, our call-in call in program, listener call-in program, uh, Radical Radio getting to the root causes of important issues of the day. This on-the-air community forum believes your voice matters and welcomes all thoughts and views without judgment. Well, please join today's <laughs> conversation by calling 415-663-8492, or you can tweet us at, at Let's Talk on KWMR. I have the tweet box in front of me, all ready for your tweets. Please tweet us. <laughs> and your hosts today are... Paul Raphael, that would be me. And Charles Schultz. Uh, I'm actually, Charles I'm Paul Raphael. That yes. would be him over no, there. No, that would be me. Um. <laughs> and I'm answering the phones today, so when you call in, you'll hear this weird little squishy noise as I put you in the system. Just hang on and wait until I say you're, you're on the air, and then give us your first name, turn down your radio, and please watch your language now. What uh, is this show about, though? Come on, let's... Well, today... I thought, since we're denuded of, uh, of our co-hosts, except you and I, that... Uh, and we're nude as well. <laughs> that we would... Very easy in radio. ...do the end-of-year show, as we did last year. We had a, uh, you know, looking back last year, we did looking back on 2015 and what 2016 was going to hold for us all, and uh, we had some a couple of little predictions, some resolutions, uh, we are, then during the show today, we might uh, listen to a couple of clips about that that we did last year. So we, we're just wanting to hear from people how their year was. Uh, I'm getting this sort of general consensus that 2016 was a terrible year, but, um, <laughs> but you know, hey. Uh, and w this totally arbitrary thing of the 31st of December being a whole new beginning, you know, whatever. Uh, Hasn't worked out that way for me yet. <laughs> <laughs> but 663-8492, call us, and I do have my top uh, seven predictions. Chaswell uh, predicts. The amazing uh, Chaswell. Indeed. Uh, uh, we're all interested in the future because that's where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives. <laughs> uh, so at my top seven predictions, I don't know if we'll, we'll uh, have a, a lull here, but hopefully people will call in. 663-415-663-8492. Do call. Nine two. And uh, and tell us uh, about what your 2017, but predictions for the new year. Let's say, well, I uh, I will uh, now I have some of my own predictions. Uh, Stuart McLean will resurface in the Castro uh, running a um, bondage costume fetish uh, uh, pleather bar entitled the Vinyl Cafe. <laughs> uh, look for that in the Castro in 2017. Uh, let's see, Amy Goodman and David Barsamian will co-front an ad campaign for Fisherman's Friends, Throat Lozenges. Uh, that's, uh, that will be exciting. I uh, need one right uh, now. Uh, oh, if you have a Fisherman's Friend for Paul Raffel or any lozenge, please bring that down to camera. Bring Kevin. your lozenges to the studio right now. Let's see. Uh, expressing disappointment, Richard Dillman thought radio would be a gateway career, uh, to a career in television, stating, it's so stupid you can't see anything. Uh, 40 years on that. Let's see. Oh, also in 2017, Janet Robbins will publish volume one of her memoir entitled Disco Bloodbath. Look, look for that at uh, Point Reyes Books. Uh, madness. <laughs> this is Chaswell Predicts for 2017. Uh, we go on in my top seven uh, predictions. Let's see. The Black Mountain Circle and The Onion will announce their merger to form the country's largest satirical publishing company. The Onion Rings. The, the onion Black Mountain Onion, onion rings. Circles. That's right. Um, let's see. The Zen Center will announce uh, that they always thought meditating on nothing was absurd, but because nobody got the joke, they have been maintaining operations in coastal California for 50 years out of a sense of social embarrassment. Ah. Very, they, like most of America's uh, elites, worship the goat god Pam. They, they, said. Su they survive on embarrassment, as do we all. <laughs> That's right. And finally, my predictions uh, for uh, 2017, Jack Elliott will retain his title in the annual Marshall Jack Elliott Russell Chatham drag race. <laughs> you, you heard it here first. These things will happen in 2017. Uh, these in-jokes from Marshall. Is a joke <laughs> thing. Um, actually, here's a little clip from last year. Here we go. Uh, let me see. Yeah, right there. So do you have any predictions for 2016? <laughs> I'm going to be semi-sober some of the time. <laughs> uh, well, that's, that's a good goal. That's good. <laughs> um, but I think that it's going to be exciting in 2016. And I think that we find lots of things, say, about our political discourse, our relationship with other people, uh, the places that we live, 
uh, often to be frightening and even humiliating to make contact with other people, to, to, uh, to get involved in, in the, your local politics or get involved just in hanging out with people and sharing meals and having a good time. So I would say for 2016, push through the humiliation and uh, just do it. Go meet your neighbors. I was, in, I was in Inverness Park the other day standing on somebody's roof, and I'm just pointing at his direct neighbors, and I said, do you know that person? No. This per No. Mm -hmm. He'd lived there for 30 years. He didn't know anybody who lived adjacent to him, not even the names. So go meet your neighbors. There you go. Well, who is that twist? But uh, I would say, having just spent a week in Inverness, I had a total of one visitor uh, three times, the lovely Melinda Lighthold. And thank you, Melinda. Yeah. Those, those mussels uh, yesterday were delicious. What a treat. Uh, but, yeah, that is a problem. It is uh, same advice for 2017. Get out there, meet your neighbors, meet people that are different from you. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. get out of your comfort zone. It's Once you do it, you you remember how to do it. You know? Yeah, I have to say that Charles, you are the best at that. You are the uh, <laughs> you, no, you really are. You uh, you you know more people around, I think, West Marin than I do, and I've been here for twenty some years. Uh, you know everyone in Marshall, for example. Well, that's easily done. You can do that in an afternoon. Half the people in Marshall, that's about it. <laughs> but um, well, you no, I think that's a that's a good point, and. Uh, we're all going to be uh, kind of pulling together if we're going to uh, if we're actually going to take part in uh, saving the country. Oh no, let's not put it that way. In uh, uh, political discourse, community discourse, uh, keeping an eye on all the uh, the usual threats to our uh, to our livelihoods out here, which usually comes in the form of either corporations or or government departments with overweening power, go to and uh, and all that requires that you actually go to meetings and meet people and get together with your neighbors. Even you know just a simple thing like going to locals' night at Tony's Seafood on uh, Friday nights. There we are. A uh, little bit of music and get to sit around with your with your neighbors and friends. It's uh, something like that is a wonderful thing. Station House is the same. They have music and it's lovely to go there on certain nights when it's not jam packed with uh, <laughs> wonderful visitors. But uh, and to just to see everybody. Yeah. And the Western serves the same purpose, of course. Oh, indeed. Well, uh, yeah. And, and getting out and uh, allowing difference, allowing to uh, have conflicts with people because that's how we learn. Uh, we don't really learn through agreement. Uh, that mm. that's kind of. I mean, it becomes groupthink. Uh, nobody uh, is really uh, uh, involved in that dialectic that that causes us to to discover new things. And mm. it's about not knowing just what you don't want. I mean, everything seems to be defined in the negative in our culture. We always think about the things that we don't want in another person, <laughs> rather than what we do want. You know, and and what. Uh, we want this place to, to look like and how it should function. And yeah. a lot of that is just getting over these kind of illusions. We live in these illusions that we need to uh, to challenge, which is at first frightening, as I said last year, you know, push through that humiliation of, of, uh, of, of dealing with um, the absence of community. That's okay. It's good to know that it's not there because then we can think, well, what sh how do we want this, this, this place to function? How do we want to interact with our neighbors? Mm, yeah, it's um, like, like owning a house... Have you ever done that? Community. I, I oh, oh that's right. Property Baron Raffel. We forgot about his, this, this slumlord. This, this, slum lord. this Donald Trump of uh, uh, West Marin, Paul Raffel. But, uh, like, like a house, like a car, like a boat, uh, community needs constant maintenance and repair sometimes. I believe that comparing and community to a, a car that needs to be repaired was the topic of a T-Rex song, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Really Marty Bolt. A Jeepster, I believe, was... Uh, oh, good. Um, well, he was before his time. <laughs> in so many ways. <laughs> and so, uh, let's see. 663-8492. Please call in. So I was listening to last year's show <clears throat> uh, with uh, Bernie Stephan, Raven Gray, and I, and... Uh, uh, a lot of it was about gun violence. Black Lives Matter started, started last year. Uh, ISIS was still slitting throats on, on video last year. I Which is odd. Her paintings are really lovely. They but stopped. Then, I mean, you wouldn't think the same <laughs> person. Uh, they stopped doing that. They're, they're, they're tired of these slitting throats on camera things. So that's this, uh, they're, they're, they have a great, better re outreach now, an outreach program. Uh, Anti-Muslim racism in the U.S. and Europe. Anti-immigration was just getting going. Uh, 
Angela, Angela Merkel was uh, under fire for allowing so many Syrian refugees in and all that sort of stuff. Uh, end of life decisions at California law uh, came into being this year. Um, let's see, the Living Planet Report, uh, 58% of the vertebrate population, uh, a 58% population decrease in vertebrates since 1970. 58%. Good Lord. And uh, we were having a lot of die-offs on the beaches on uh, up and down the coast here last year and the year before. Uh, I checked on that, and uh, there's, there are the usual die-offs that happen, you know, hundreds or thousands of... Of birds washing up here and there all over the all over the planet, you know. I mean, it happens all the time. No, but uh, but it was really bad, and the the, the um, marine biologist was saying that the the Pacific coast was becoming a desert and all this sort of stuff. But again, that's something that seems to have uh, sorted itself out. Mostly, there's not so many dead birds. In there. I would like to uh, point out uh, some of the positives. Uh, in 2016, yeah. uh, a new species was discovered, Homo invernineus, which is... <laughs> that was, would be you now. Was discovered to be distinct from Homo sapiens. It's very interesting. A lot of research... Uh, going into that. What is it? They can't see you uh, shaking your head uh, over the radio. <laughs> and also, they can't tell that we're naked. Exactly. Um, a little shy. It's a little chilly in here. Yeah, we need but to put up a sort of curtain. I don't. Oh, uh, and look at that. And uh, yes, we have a caller. Hang on. Here we go. Hi, caller. You're on the air. What is your name, please? And what's your language, please? Sally. Sally, and I'll mind my language. Yes, keep it, <laughs> keep it English, please. Yeah, Ameri- not English. American. American. <laughs> A-M-U-R-I-C-A-N. I'm going to write that down again. Uh, A-M. So how, uh, uh, how, was your, uh, how was your 2015? 2016. <laughs> my 20- I've forgotten where I am. Fine, thank you. 2016, that's, it's, it's been a mixed, a mixed bag of great, Great gifts and great happiness and much pain and sadness. Yeah. Uh, a, a lot of your favorites. Global and global, yeah. Yeah, there were, it seems like um, a lot of leading lights in uh, in the entertainment industry anyway uh, went away this year, as, along with several leading ladies in West Marin, which was a terrible mm. thing. We've had a, a spate mm. of... Of passings this year. There's Alice Beal and Janice LeBeau, just to mention uh, two, the, the two latest, and yeah. uh, and Carla Steinberg, of course. Sure. And, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. yes. It's been a trying year. Um, what do you do? You have any uh, resolutions? Do you have any? Ooh. Do you have any predictions for next year? I'm going to try to eat less almond butter. Oh, marzipan. No, is that almond butter? No, no. Well, it's almond it's like something. Like an almond it? paste. It's um, deliciously fattening. Maybe I'll eat more of that and less almond butter. There you go. Thank the, you, Charles. Th- I have so another problem <laughs> solved here on Let's Listen more to Charles Talk. Pad. This is like Charles Talk. <laughs> the, the, yes, let's Charles let Charles talk because he has been deprived of. I'll be on the air tomorrow uh, at 1 p.m. and there actually goes Russell Chatham very slowly past this studio. <laughs> Sorry, that was my prediction. He's really going to need to pick up his game if he's going to beat Jack Elliott in the annual drag race. I got to tell you, um, and you know. But, Two of the slowest drivers on Highway But one. you digress. Yes. Indeed. No, oh, where, uh, will what? there be more digression in 2017, or will there be more f- focus and more mm. feistiness and uh, more fight on behalf of those of us who are completely terrified? Well, am I right in thinking, caller, that you are headed to Washington, D.C. in January? Mm, you are correct. And what's that all about? Well, it's interesting. It's the Women's March. It's it's the Women's March uh, after the, the it takes place the day after the inauguration. There actually these marches are happening in cities all over the country, but uh, it just seemed appropriate to go to Ground Zero and mm. um, march uh, for the rights of women, uh, for women's reproductive rights, for um, on be and on behalf of other, uh, you know, groups that are uh, sort of under attack by this incoming, well, the current, uh, a huge part of the current uh, political climate, and now the Pandora's box of of um, ghouls who are 
uh, crawling across the political landscape to try and mess with um, transgender people and uh, people of color and, you know, mm. all sorts of what you might call, I don't know about the word marginalized, but maybe that's the appropriate word. People who are under attack. Mm. Women are have definitely been under attack for a long time. And then, of course, you're going to get a lot of men sort of poo-pooing this notion. But when you start closing free clinics and start opposing birth control and you start mandating what a woman can, mandating what a woman can uh -huh. cannot do uh -huh. and this is an epidemic uh throughout the country uh, it's this is extremely dangerous i've argued with people who voted for trump about the severity of this turn of events and well this one person a male relatively young uh just said oh it's abortion is protected by the, you know, the Supreme Court already decided that it's not going to change. So, you know, there's that side of the aisle has its own bizarro Rama magical thinking mm. that doesn't really go along with their how everything they voted for. You know, there's not it, nothing makes sense anymore. This is what I find really terrifying. So, the march for me, I've actually been trying to make a list of what does this march mean for me because it's been purported as you know we're not marching against the president elect, we're not marching against him. But actually, I am. Mm. So, uh, no one's going to be able to stop me from feeling that I am. Well, I think it's a good thing though that uh, uh, that you know all these people that you know hopefully you and others are going to meet that it's going to open up you know different possibilities by meeting new people and and, uh, and engaging in politics in a way that frankly would not be happening if uh, Trump wasn't elected. So there's some ironic uh, qualities to a Trump presidency, and one of them is that people are going to get engaged in questions and, and activities that maybe they they wouldn't have. So. If that well yeah I mean that that is that's the the bright way of looking at it is that it's going to be a catalyst for more involvement in politics local and national and global but, I hope so uh, yeah. let's hope so otherwise uh, who knows what will happen is, is it as bad as we're all thinking it's going to be yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Prediction for 2017, uh, it is as bad as we think it's going to be. I mean, it is. It, yeah. it's, it's this weird, uh, this weird magical thinking that has gone, I think, on, it's been on both sides of the aisle or this weird political correctness where people don't really feel that they can, you know, there's all this propriety of, you know, showing respect after all the people have spoken. Well, 2.8 million, upwards of 3 million people spoke in the other direction, mm -hmm. for better or for worse. And, it, you know, the system is so flawed. And anyway, I don't want to be a kvetch, even though I just <laughs> am. I don't I mean, believe I really you. am one. I was born, I was weaned on kvetched them. <laughs> so 20, 2017 for you will be a year of kvetching. <laughs> but that could be true. How dare you, sir? You may want to get yourself a roll of duct tape. <laughs> um, oh, we're doing that again. Oh, gracious. <laughs> and you can get that at the Vinyl Cafe in the Castro, Stuart McLean's new business. Exactly. Uh, all, all of it your bond, bondage Minor gears. Colors. Indeed, indeed. Uh, well, I, I would just say that Keith Olbermann had, has a broadcast that I have seen where he talks about how to resist Hmm. Ha, the relevance of this incoming president and things like that, you know, for all, for those of us who are upset, very, very upset, uh, and are looking for some sort of a way to learn how to be empowered, you know, how do you regain whatever personal power and faith you may have lost hmm. because of this turn of events and so forth. So it's, I would... I would advise people to seek Keith that out. Olberman, okay. Keith Olberman. And that is what well, no, but I'm very excited about just the future 
for myself personally because I want to be a happy-based person, and I am a happy-based person. I'm just a, a deeply concerned happy-based person. <laughs> <laughs> it's what well, it seems quite normal. I yeah, think it's, it, uh, isn't that is what keeps the blood flowing, isn't it? A little concern, a little uh, a little fear. Oh well, I, uh, I mean, there are other things. It keeps the adrenals overwhelmed. Actually, well, but yes, I discovered uh, yesterday that there is a limit to the value uh, health-wise of hot toddies after you reach about four. Uh, but that also does keep the Anyway, um, keep the virus at bay. Two might be medicinal. Right. <laughs> oh, you're, put, you're pushing it, Schultz. Uh, th- that's never been said before. That's so. That's a, a new thing. <laughs> First time here on the air. First time. Thank you for all that you do. Your both of your shows are very edifying, and oh. mm. many you. many happy returns of the day, or whatever the heck that means. Anyway, I've never understood no that phrase, but I I understand that it's. A nice thing to say. I will, and for old Lang Zane. Yeah, I, uh, well, thank um, you, caller. And let's support KWMR in the new year. Ah, uh, yeah. That. Because Keep local, this, this little local beacon is the way to go. A flame, yes, Indeed. exactly. Thank you the very much. The flame of KWMR burns eternal, and KWMR.org, that's where you can support our, our wonderful community radio station. There you are. A plug for I ha- us. I have another prediction. In 2017, my idea that everyone give up their vacations in West Marin will be adopted, and all of that money will be donated to KWMR so that uh, its employees can be paid a living wage. That's, <laughs> that's my, my prediction. So um, there you are. When you cancel your eight trips to Mexico, go to KWMR.org and give that money, give that money. to your local radio Look at the station. money you're saving. Yes. Oh, wait. No. Anyway, uh, do you want to stay on the line, Sally, or do you want to uh, head off I and think I'll go. get on with your life? I'll <laughs> let you go before I cause everyone to want to commit, like, harakiri. you know, collective harakiri. Yeah. Well, normally it's just me who has that effect on people, so I'm glad other people are, you know. Allow uh, me to share the responsibility. In de- yeah. Finally, the heavy burden being lifted <laughs> off of renowned it's, grump Charles Schultz. Thank you. My, my work here is done. <laughs> Convetulous, it's wonderful. Convetulous is, <laughs> and people call in because really you're sick of listening to me. So call in to what is it? Four one five six six three eight four nine two. I'll clear the line now. Thank you, madam. <laughs> Indeed, thank you so Very much. Well, happy New Year. Oh gracious! And 2017 approaches. Uh... Oh, here's a here's a, a little bright spot. Oh. Um. Let me just play this here. Climate change is—it's definitely getting weirder. Climate, isn't it? I mean, yeah. This well, week there was this weird El Nino pattern you know, going over the Arctic. Remember, you, what did you say to me outside? Marshall was colder this morning than the North Pole. Because the North Pole is 50 <laughs> degrees warmer than it usually is right now, and it's raining up there, which is an unprecedented, Yikes. never before heard of event. There you Ooh. go. That's what happened last. And I looked it up this year uh, again. Uh, the North Pole is 40 to 50 degrees warmer than average up there, but it was actually colder than Marshall. Uh, <laughs> what, what's the concern, really? <laughs> um, no, it was Raven Gray talking about the climate, obviously a very important issue. And I just say refocus your efforts on where you have political power, and that's always at the local. You're not going to get anything at the at the federal level. It's just not how it works. So, uh, so of course, yes, the, the, some Go little, March, but... little events of uh, 2016. Uh, people in uh, Britain apparently thought they were voting yes or no for breakfast. And, <laughs> what? And uh, said yes to... Brexit, unfortunately. Um, Maybe. The research vessel, the Royal Research Ship, uh, that was... The <laughs> <laughs> this is David Attenborough. It named they, after they, a, they put out the, uh, a, a little contest, said, uh, what do the people want to call our latest research vessel? You know, whipping up a little interest in research. Wonderful. And the common consensus from the British people was Boaty McBoatface. <laughs> there we go. Uh, unfortunately, though, they did not call it that. They called it the RRS Sir David Attenborough. Well, you know. There was a subsequent uh, online uh, uh, sort of poll or whatever that uh, was petitioning David Attenborough to change his name by deed poll to Sir David Boaty McBoatface. Boaty McBoatface. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Did not happen so. Uh, Rio Olympics, remember them? Oh, hey. It was, seemed so important at the time, didn't it? Uh, Cubs won the World Series, whatever that means. Uh, uh, we were there in Marin Joe's for that. I mean, SeaWorld stopped breeding orcas. Uh, uh, that's a good thing. I guess. And uh, Samsung came out with an exploding phone, which was great for terrorists everywhere. I think, that's, I think maybe the Joker is in charge now. I think he's designing most <laughs> of the products that we, that we see. Uh, happy Birthday, the song, went into the public domain, so you don't owe anybody any money anymore when you sing Happy Birthday. And Pokemon Go. Oh, dear, I don't... What? the heck was that all about? <laughs> well, I, as two devoted iPhone users, so that would be me and Paul. Um, except I don't have one. And nor do I. Um, <laughs> the, the, I don't know. It's just what people do at the end of dying empires, you know, instead of throwing <laughs> themselves off cliffs. Anyway, give us a call. 415-663-8492. Let us know how 2016 was for you and what you're looking forward to in 2017. I mean, life goes on. There are children being born everywhere, and uh, congratulations Congratulations to Matt and Caitlin. Oh, that's right. New baby just before Christmas. Baby boy. Matt and Caitlin, congratulations. Uh, speaking of which, California's birth rate between July, 5th, July of 2015 and July of 2016 <clears throat> was at its lowest recorded level, 12.42 in 1,000 to 1,000 people. Uh, there you go. And Marin also, although it had a 3.5% increase in population, only had 2,286 births, and so there you go. I it's it's a low here. birth rate. There's 7 billion people on Earth, and I'm still single, so clearly not enough. And I, this declining birth rate is really worrying me. It's just not enough choice. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, there were terrible, uh, terrible passings in the year, like, hmm. uh, you know, Bowie, of course, Prince. Lena Cohen, Zsa Zsa Gabor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Is it a brilliant, uh, terrible passing? Debbie Reynolds, Carrie Fisher, George Michael, Vera Rubin, one for Henry oh. Heimlich, uh, <laughs> Neville Mariner. Oh, it's a Neville Mariner. Oh, that's mm-hmm. Henry Heimlich. We, yes, we do have Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm... Henry Heimlich uh, actually saved a uh, – he was in a nursing home for the last period of his life, and the first time he was ever asked to actually perform his maneuver was on a woman who was choking on, uh, on food at the nursing home. That Aww. was the only time he was ever asked to do it, and he just passed on, not of choking. He's and just we waiting do have a caller. Yeah. Hello, caller. You're on the air. What's your name, please? Uh, my name is Melinda. <laughs> Melinda. <laughs> yeah, the, the visitor person. Oh, thank you so much, Excellent. Melinda. Delicious muscles. Muscles were good. I agree. Yeah. <clears throat> the right kind of muscles. All right. Well, what I, what I think may happen in the next coming months and years is everyone will forget more of what they thought they knew. And uh, hmm. but you know, I don't know everyone. Everyone over maybe seventy-five. And then the other thing is that everything becomes more simultaneous as the, as time marches on, with uh, marching in place. I think you're going to have to explain both of those concepts to us. Well, slow. so why are they going to forget, and and what is, do you mean by simultaneous? Well, it seems like Thursday just keeps happening. Thursday, Thursday just keeps Thursday happening. Days of the week also, <laughs> it's just is it Monday? Oh, it was just Monday. Well, it was just Thursday, wasn't it? Um, that's the day the library's closed in Inverness. Oh. Uh, no. uh, and it seems like it's always Thursday. The library's closed. Well, there are other things, though. To finish up with 2016, yes. I want to recommend that everybody go online and, and hit the Rosenberg Family Fund for Children and sign the, a petition, which is to exonerate Rosa... Uh, uh, what's Ethel. Ethel Rosenberg. Ethel. Ethel. Before Obama leaves office, we're asking him. I think he has two days to do that. Rosenberg family, what was it? Rosenberg children? Yeah, the Children's Fund. Uh, It's, you know, Robert Mirapol um, started it. He got to grow up with living with the fact that his parents had been executed. Yeah. And as I recall the story, Rosa, I mean Ethel. (laughs) (laughs) Rosa Luxemburg, you think you Also killed. Uh, Ethel was singing. The whole time, hey. I guess. Finally, she couldn't sing anymore. Mm. But um, anyway, you know, and I w- well, you know, I'm, I, this was all reminded to me because I tuned into the radio before you came on, and I heard the end of Amy Goodman's show, and she also reminded us about Sacco and Vincente. Yeah. 
And, you know, it's just we're on a spiral thing here, or a circle or something. If people don't know about this stuff, they think that Trump is a whole new deal. But um, anyway. And also, what about living people in jail? Uh, uh, right. uh, Private Manning, Julian Assange, uh, uh, Leonard uh, Pelletier. I don't know that case very much. Peltier. Yeah, yeah Peltier. Yes. And I think oh, um, my buddy um, Abu Jamal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mumia. Yeah, you know, he was, that was a total rigged trial. They just wanted mm-hmm. to get him out of the journalism in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. So, in fact, he was on K, um, what is it, KQED thing. He was an announcer. Yeah. yeah. Was he really? Yeah, yeah. Mm, I love it. So, uh, but oh, bo- he, he was trying to shine some light on the corruption of the police force. And anyway, they got rid of him. But it was very messy. Uh, so, but, and he's gone on because the prison uh, radio project has, you know, put his stuff out there. What's your name? Anyway, I can't remember the name. There you are. You I have forgotten. <laughs> especially when I'm, especially when on air. So anyway, get Sally Phillips back on. She's much more. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Melinda. Oh, you're so welcome. Uh, uh, later. Bye. Care. Thank you. And you're listening to KW Marm Point Ray Station, and the number to join Let's Talk is four one five six six three eight four nine two. But we have oh, uh, there are announcements, yes, and we, we have uh, Amanda hovering around here. She is going hovering. to come back. Yeah, she's hovering. How is she doing that? She's uh, inches off the ground. It's, it's wild. Uh, we'd like to thank the Bovine Bakery. The Bovine Bakery, located in Point Reyes Station, providing West Marin with pastries, coffee, soups, quiche, and pizza made from organic ingredients, open seven days a week. The Bovine Bakery, one of our wonderful... Underwriters here, and KWMR is also supported by the West Marin Review, a fine art and literary literary journal featuring prose, poetry, and art from West Marin and beyond. The 2016 review is in bookstores now, online at westmarinreview.org. Yes, uh, things like that keep happening. People still doing art, still writing, still uh, still playing music. Whether it's they should or shouldn't. And, I'll uh, tell you, when my reign of terror begins, we're going to put an end to all of that. I've got a lovely uh, headline from the Hamburger Morgenpost <laughs> from, <laughs> yeah, from last on. year when Trump was elected. The the big headline, it's a, it's a, one of those colored... Um, <coughs> colored sheets, you know, rags. Anyway, uh, Trump, it, and the headline was, Bitte nicht den Horror Clown. <laughs> Please know the horror clown. The Please. horror clown. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and and about the horror clowns in your life and what you want for them in 2017, please call us uh, yes. at 6638492. Tell us what your hopes and fears and all the other things, uh, all your expectations for 2017. Here's something from last year. Uh, Bernie Steffen was was our one of our co-hosts then, and he had uh, this prediction to make. I believe this is a prediction. I think the unraveling will continue. You know, we saw how in Greece uh, they had a, a major uh, crisis, financial crisis, that apparently Germany and the rest of uh, Europe bailed out Greece to impose austerity on them. But the people there uh, pushed back, and a lot of what's happening in Greece is now outside of the economy, where people are doing their uh, village soup kitchens and in other ways and free doctor care and health care outside of the system. So that the black market market starts flourishing when the mm-hmm. formal economic system is, uh, the, the, the screws are turned on it. Mm-hmm. And, and now we hear about Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is insolvent. Uh, they're looking for the uh, U.S. government, the federal government, to bail them out. And the Congress doesn't want to. The president does. But uh, we're going to see more of those dominoes. So I don't think we'll have worldwide collapse next year. I'd, I'd mm-hmm. like it. But we'll definitely have unraveling. <laughs> and to predict the unraveling, how it'll occur, I I don't think is is no. makes much sense. There you go, an unraveling, an economic unraveling. I think the unraveling is slowly. It's like a it's like a ball of wool. You're just pulling, 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 pulling. It's gradually going away. Uh, yeah, there was no actual collapse for the globe this year for well, uh, economic, but it's all in in process. Right? Well, that's a good thing though, because it gives us time to formulate a sort of serious response. And what you get is people who talk about revolution. Uh, Chris Hedges, great journalist and writer, you know, really. Uh, 
uh, does a lot of great work in terms of exposing what he calls this empire of illusion that we live in. And I, I certainly agree with his analysis. But then he kicks over into this mode when he talks about revolt and revolution. And that is almost invariably a disaster. Revolution produces mm. nightmares. But what we can do is think about how we need to change relationships in the economy, our relationship to how we get our food, how we get our heat and electricity, how we get uh, water, uh, who who owns it, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in whose interest are, are these uh, um, economic relationships being defined, mm. um, and then use local government to affect those kinds of changes. I mean, the problem is is... You know, many of the local government is just so depressing, and the people who get involved with it are just like people you wouldn't sit with at the lunch table right. in high school. You would have actively shunned these people, or if you could lure them away to a quiet place, beaten them. Um, you know, and so I, I see why people are, are utterly depressed by engagement with the local. Uh, at the same time, that's where we need to to get involved. And I'd say all these people say act. You know, I see act this, act that. It's an old, it's an old uh, fascist uh, uh, idea that, that action is what is required and that thinking is decadent and defeat. Um, I, I don't think so. We need to think. So March, if you want to go break some windows, I'm fine with that. I, I technically probably can't say that. Uh, but definitely go in March and, and express your anger. But the day after that... After you've had this sort of collective, sort of cathartic, uh, like, well, I, all I can think of is Euripides, the, the Bacche, but um, anyhow, uh, after you've had your, your march, then we've got to think about how step by step we can start redefining these relationships so that we don't have a collapse, so mm. that we don't have a revolution, so mm. that we actually, in a very serious and deliberate way, are going to redefine our relationship to each other. And to do that, we have to re redefine our relationship to those resources we need to survive. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, <laughs> that was really boring. So no, call no. in and interrupt Charles. No, really good. Um, yeah, do call in, 415-663-8492, and let us know what you thought about 2016, what you're looking forward to in 2017. Uh, I think you're right. And, of course, the only place that, you know, one person can make a difference, but it's going to start locally in your little bubble, right? You, you're the one who uh, – we're all the ones who decide whether our bubble stays, <laughs> stays here or bursts and whether it's in good working condition and, you know, all that and whether it works for everybody that's here. Well, the funny thing, it isn't a bubble. I mean, West Marin is mm -hmm. wired into the global economy just True. as uh, uh, completely as Manhattan – or Dubai, uh, or, you know, the, it, we're not separate from any of those issues. And actually, the mm. danger becomes, I've been writing about it, sort of, <laughs> to see if anybody publishes it, uh -huh, um, about a fascist culture, mm. and how when I look back at the development of, of fascist and proto-fascist, these sort of pseudo-culture and religion and, and traditions and all these uh, fake histories that they come up with, it... It relates to our own fictional relationship to place, to community, to reality. We are doing the same kinds of things, and we are living within an empire, and we're very much a part of it. So this, all of this sort of feel-good, nature-spirit stuff, you know, reach for your wallet when anybody starts talking to you about that because mm. th th that is a, a weird kind of – either a ripoff or just a sort of dangerous fantasy that we're lured into. We don't see ourselves as we are, which is nodes at the end of global supply chains. I mean, coltan in your iPhone from the Congo, built by sure. slaves in Asia, blah, blah, blah. blah. No, we're, sure. we're absolutely a part of it. So, And we can change it. Yeah. That's a good thing that we're connected. Even uh, <clears throat> alternative energies, of course, uh, have a terrible footprint of many kinds in slavery and in, uh, and in uh, resource depletion and pollution all over the country, all over the world. But, really? um, well, of course, how do you make solar panels? You don't, it's you sand, don't glass. grind them. <laughs> well, it's glass. Yeah, they're, you they're, don't dig them up. You they're know. energy inputs, but, I mean, we're talking about the difference between coal or uranium yeah, yeah, or yeah. petroleum or, you know, glass, silicon. You know. Why not use oil and coal to build solar panels? That's oh, yes, it's exactly. Uh, but anyway, uh, here's a good news, I think, which is uh, installing solar panels is now cheaper than... Uh, than coal and oil power. Yep. Solar panels are now 
Uh, let's see. Uh, utilities added 9.5 gigawatts of volt- photovoltaic capacity to the U.S. grid, making solar the top fuel. Can that be true? Mm, no, uh, no. <laughs> no. The U.S. added about 125 solar panels every minute in 2016, double the pace of 2015. There you go. Well, I, you know, and the, the, the great thing about human beings is how rapidly they can change. People no. who are in old industries that uh, need to cease to exist, say the automotive industry or the coal mining industry, yeah, well. etc. They can do other things. That's the great thing about human beings. They can change, and they can change on a dime. Mm. And actually, it's a pernicious myth that they can't change. I heard a, a young uh, uh, journalist who'd gone to the same high school as uh, George W. Bush, uh, in- incidentally, you know, uh, saying that, well, you, we'll, the coal miners, they'll just have to be put on a sort of pension by the government because they don't know how to do anything else. That kind of elitism is really scary and pernicious. Coal miners can learn, just like everybody else, can learn how to do different things. Other things, exactly. The the question is, are we going to try and provide opportunities for other ways of living? Well, so here's a serious way. As we discussed, what, uh, two or three weeks ago on the the, uh, show on work, Uh, Here's another report. I guess it's from actually based on the same report from Oxford University. 47% of jobs, total jobs, will disappear in the next 25 years. So, yes, uh, Americans are certainly going to have to be resilient and, uh, and creative and resourceful because all these jobs that we're all training for, that we're all going to college for, that we're all getting MBAs and all that, all those jobs, 47, almost half of the jobs that now exist will be going away because, mainly because of automation, you know, you think about Amazon's fulfillment centers, there's nobody there. It's all done by robots. Fulfillment you know, center. How, how Nazi is that? I know. Fulfillment center. <laughs> Isn't that from uh, Soylent Green? Uh, <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Amazon um, packages are people. Uh, yeah, this is Let's Talk Radio co-hosts Paul Raffel and today Charles Schultz. Yeah, I'm Paul Raffel as well. <laughs> uh, call us on uh, 415-663-8492. Or tweet us at, at Let's Talk on KWMR. Come on, Mia's usually good for a tweet. Mia, what are you doing out there? Huh? <laughs> I gave you a lemon. <laughs> Nothing? Nothing to tweet? Amanda ran away. Give us a tweet. Yeah, we have 17 minutes. So, uh, we, should, we should just let this show run until, uh, if, if, until we have five callers. What is on next, by the way? Uh, coming up next is New School at Common Wheel Conversations. <laughs> that just with, got bumped. With, uh, 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 who, who is it? Is, is, does it tell us? It doesn't say. It, it doesn't say. Well, um, we're gonna... uh, is there a historic economic shift underway? There's another article with a with a. Uh, hmm, he's a. Yeah, sure. He's a New York-based economist. Uh, yes, he he's he thinks the the key is in uh, in free trade, of course, and oh dear. Yeah. And globalism. So, yeah, I mean, globalization, as uh, my dear friend in uh, Tamales, uh, who will remain nameless, anonymous, uh, points out, globalization isn't the problem. It isn't that we don't learn so much and are enriched so much by our contact with other cultures. The real issue is these regimes of trade which impoverish and enslave populations around the world so that we can have cheap uh, uh, consumer goods in the United States. Uh, and um, that isn't worth the trade-off. Uh, mm. And, uh, you know, it really, you can't be pro-free trade and anti-imperialist. You can't be anti-racist and pro-free trade. You know, yeah. th- that's the, the way that they're trying to play it, I think, is that the real problem is that poor people are just racist in the United States and uh, all this free trade is a good thing and blah, 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 blah. I hope in 2017, Hillary Clinton voters, the left of center sort of uh, liberals in the United States, will uh, engage in self-criticism. Hmm. Uh, Trump has given uh, us the opportunity just to purely hate this really uh, horror clown. Uh, as, uh, uh, <laughs> the horror clown. Uh, uh, the, the horror clown. Um, <clears throat> and, and when somebody is so up bad, it presents us with this temptation to see ourselves as good. But the problem right. is, if, if just if Bernie Sanders voters uh, had come out and voted for Hillary Clinton, uh, these were being the the working class voters in the heartland who who did vote for Sanders in the primary, but would not vote for Hillary in in, in November. If they had, uh, Hillary would have won. 
Mm-hmm. And so what is the response? Well, the sort of typical response, I said, well, they're racist, they're misogynist, they're sexist, or this, that, the other thing. Mm-hmm. We need to have a little bit more self-criticism. We need to think about how a, an agenda of free trade and uh, and and identity politics ultimately uh, is bankrupt right. uh, uh, for for all Americans. Not, I mean, and for for the climate and and for war and for all of those issues, you this, this free trade stuff's got to go. Yeah, the system mm-hmm. is the system is broken, and it's breaking us. It's breaking. Uh, it's breaking countries all over the world, and uh, uh, you know. <clears throat> and what is the defense for that? In 2017, what do we do to do we are we going to cherry pick the things that we're we're fighting against or resisting? Let's put it resistance instead of revolting. Um, well, I think in a mea culpa, this is my eighth prediction now. Uh, Robert Reich will stand with the sandwich board in the uh, Commons area in Point Reyes with uh, me and NAFTA cause Trump 2016 <laughs> uh, sandwich board. So uh, look out for Robert Reich to be doing that. He's got to work on his grammar a little bit. In 2017. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, he does. Another thing to criticize him. For. Here's uh, here's an interesting factoid: uh, 2016 is going to be one second longer than 2015. <laughs> yes. Oh, we have a call. There's a, oh, the leap, the leap second. Is it Robert Reich with his apology for NAFTA? We shall see. We can only hope. Yes. Caller, you're on the air. What's your name, please? My name is Fred from Marshall. Oh, Fred. Fred. How are you? How are you, Fred? Um, I'm kind of sick. but yeah. uh, Everybody's well, sick. Anyhow. <laughs> yeah, I, I think 2017, I predict uh, West Marin was going to secede <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> okay. And we'll start the benevolent dictatorship of Rafaelia Schultz. Ah, you see, that's the key. Wait, the, second, uh, the second part of that. He's just <clears throat> a warlord from the Northern Marches uh, well, of Marshall. No, no. King I, Rafael. Uh, You'd be a fine sort of figurehead. <laughs> Sorry, Fred. We'll carry often on. often have uh, uh, the dictatorship on the even days. And, of course, Charles can have them on the odd days. <laughs> very odd. What are you trying to say? Very odd days, indeed. <laughs> and as it's the 29th, um, I uh, would like to declare. It's started yet. And, and so I see. Well, I'm jumping the gun on uh, Schultz Rafaelia, I believe is what well, it's your term. I see. Uh, Schultz in brackets Rafaelia. Rafaelia. Oh, I see. Rafaelia Schultz. Rafaelia Schultz. Rafaelia Thank you. Beautiful woman, Rafaelia Schultz. I remember. Well, it's, uh, that's a brilliant <laughs> idea, Fred. I don't know where you came up with it. But, uh, uh, yes, the kingdom of Rafaelia. That would be a great society. Session uh, missing a bit of kingdom of well, anyway. we, we already have a French embassy in Marshall. Exactly. Start, and uh, I wish Claude de Bouzy is uh, our, yeah. our guy there. He never calls into the show. I don't know why Claude de Bouzy. Very strange. Nor Hydran Manor, I noticed. Yeah. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of missing, missing uh, people. I wish they would call. Um, well, thank you, Fred. Do you have any other oh. predictions? Uh, no. Oh. How was, uh, how was the last year for you? Was it, uh, was it one to remember? No, I already forgot it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to one to remember whether you like it or not. Good plan. Yeah, so. All right. Well, thank, thank you, Fred. Happy, uh, happy uh, New Year. Yes, happy New Year, year everybody. Prosit Noyar. Prosit Noyar. Yeah, exactly. much, much better pronunciation. Than and, um, let's see. Oh, Resolutions. Oh, oh, oh. Here's, here's a resolution. This is, uh, I think Raven's Can resolution. Can I share my rosy vision? <laughs> <laughs> yes. A rosy I mean, vision. I, I do feel that. And, and then I've got my New Year's resolutions. Should I tell you uh, what some yeah. of them are? They're quite rosy, Bernie. All right. Go interested? for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get off Facebook, guys. I need to get off Facebook. I really do. Okay. And I'm going to more time outside in nature, and I'm going to have a more simple lifestyle. I'm trying to immerse myself back in an ancestral lifeway primitive skills community, which I've diverted from lately. I'm going to give up coffee. That's going to be a tough one. Huh, cool. And then I'm going to eat more wild foods and keep tracking and writing and creating. And I do a lot of dance, so I like to keep dancing, keep speaking truth to power. This radio show has been great for that, and I still want to do that. And I, I want to keep doing grief work and releasing grief and keeping up my gratitude practice and continuing to take action however small and however hopeless I sometimes feel it is just to keep taking those steps to uh, create change and to cultivate more kindness and compassion and did, and did she uh, stop using Facebook? No, in fact uh, her, uh, her resolution to her resolve to uh, speak truth to power has taken taken place on Facebook with the uh, Standing Rock 
Oh, that's what well, standoff. So uh, it's a it's a great tool for for whipping people up like that. And she's been doing great work there. And she did go to uh, she did go to an ancient skills um, center up north and uh, with her son. It was wonderful. So she did part of it. I my resolutions were just to be uh, devoting more time to love and to uh, and to community and to uh, and to this show. And I, I to, said I'd be semi sober some of the time, and I believe I have achieved that. In fact, <laughs> what are you doing the after the show? The um, <laughs> so quickly six six three eight four nine two. We just have a few minutes for the top of the hour. We'd love to hear you call in with your resolutions and reflections. And I would say tomorrow one p.m. on KWMR, Professor Philip Morawski joins us to show or describe how Facebook is actually a uh, neoliberal training tool to make you an entrepreneur of yourself. And if that doesn't creep you out, then definitely tune in. An entrepreneur of <clears throat> yourself. And that's right. Mm. And the, uh, the, the way in which we've hollowed out symbols like friendship and self and soul and all that stuff. And what remains is this husk that we're peddling uh, to anyone who will buy. Mm. So 2017, um, 6638492, just eight more minutes before we, Oh, and look at that. Look at that. It's like magic, really. Hello, caller. You're on the air. What's your name, please? This is Colleen from Marshall. Oh, oh my darling. Yes. How are you? I'm, well, like Fred said, we've both been sick for three uh, weeks, but we're oh. better. <clears throat> and we are going to be there tomorrow at Tawn's party, so we'll be there. Oh, um, happy 50th Tawn right. Yes. I know. And, uh, anyway, my my feeling is, uh, I think it was you, Paul, that just said that you're going to be in a more more give up more love and more peace and and you know make friends and that's pretty much what my feeling is. And there's so much negativity out there in the big world. And mm. um, you know, I just want to just hold a space for love mm-hmm. and compassion and friendship and just. You know, I mean, what else can we do? No, we can have gamel dance. Okay. We can have Lina Akovic. Gamel dance and some pickled herring. And, uh, yeah. uh, indeed, indeed. Well, that's lovely. Yeah, I think that's uh, definitely on a personal level. That is the key for everyone is to uh, encourage empathy in their lives and uh, and deep feelings for other people and connection with other people. That's where it all starts. Because uh, you know, a revolution or a resistance can't happen without several people at least being involved and they all have to have some kind of connection some kind of trust in each other and some you know exactly. knowledge of each other that's yeah. why i love I gossip say, it's not gossip it's news yeah. yes i just want to say something that i've been watching on facebook the the danish ambassador i mean the american ambassador to denmark he this whole month mm. You know, he's a one, lo- lovely man, and the Danes really love him. He's a beautiful man from, from uh, I think he's from Michigan. I'm not really sure. But anyhow, Many he, was saying, he had um, like a, a daily thing with the, what they call the Yule calendar, which is a Christmas calendar, the, the hmm. 24 days before Christmas, starting December 1st. Oh, yeah. Advent, what he said, Advent you know, every day he, he came on and he said, you know, there's so much negativity, there's so much stuff, so let's look at the positive thing. There's, there's, rather than... You know, concentrate on all of this stuff that's mm-hmm. not working. Concentrate on the stuff that is working. Yeah. And every day he had like a different things that he was talking about worldwide that is working. And then I think that's what we need to do. You know, look at what is working. Mm. And and because it's like the rotten apple. Yeah, the rotten apple could spoil the whole bell. But if you take that rotten apple out and then just look at all the good apples. Are you saying I should be thrown into the bay? Throw the rotten as, apple oh, as a rotten apple. Pigs feed it to the pigs. Oh, I should be fed to pigs. <laughs> Gracious, feed it to the pigs. <laughs> Very good. Well, and thank you so much, Curry. And it has a use. It's recycled. So, are you feeling you, that's giving you some positivity for the new year? Is that the, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Because yeah. this past year, yeah, there was a lot of stuff that was stuck. It sucked. It sucked. It sucked, it sucked in many ways, but. Yeah. But you know, the, we just have to be be positive and 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 then you know see what we can create on the positive level. And do what you can do. Yeah, yeah. and I do <clears throat> agree with Fred that we do we th- we should have a king of Australia and uh, yeah, and in, in, we we need to create uh, that kingdom. Oh. My loving subject. Well, the missing so part, much. of course, is uh, the the important prime minister. The real thought behind the whole thing, uh, Charles Schultz. 
Exactly. Oh, yeah, exactly. exactly. Finally, some outlier. Exactly. Is, <laughs> you know, he's just a titular figure of, you know, uh, King Raphael. Anyway, thank exactly. you, Karine. That was very nice. Okay. Happy <laughs> New Year. Take care. Happy New Year. You know, that actually happened at the end of the uh, Portuguese dictatorship. They just let uh, Salazar, um, who had become senile, sit and sign things all day. And he, he, had, he had lost power, but they didn't tell him. It was yeah. very, a very gentle way to have a coup. And uh, reading this uh, today that Canada may not be the... Uh, May not be the haven for uh, for lefties if they are fleeing the Trump deal uh, because they're going they're looking for the far right person who's going to run for office next. So there's well, this there's this r- far right thing that's happening around Europe. Europe is no longer safe anywhere. I think. Well, the thing you have to the left has to claim. State claim to these issues. If if opposition to even modest opposition to all of this immigration, which should therefore be opposition to all these wars in the Middle East and Africa that we are conducting, uh, if that's not allowed to be said because it means you are therefore a racist, mm. um, th- then yeah, there's not going to be any stopping the rise of the right. Mm. And but this is again a matter of reflection and self criticism on the part of the quote unquote left or, of liberals. And if they double down on their, well, anybody who opposes this is a racist and a bigot and a this mm-hmm. and a that and just stay in that mode. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't change anything. Well, you're going to get Marine <laughs> Le Pen uh, is, right. uh, and, uh, and uh, Annika Vanderveen can call in to, to tell me how you pronounce uh, uh, Gert uh, Wilders. How do you I mean? I have mm-hmm. no idea. These Dutch names. Um, who, who may become the prime minister uh, in the Netherlands in 2017. Mm. Um, and the, the problem there is the, the response by even the, you know, center right uh, is not to, uh, to address those issues yeah. of, uh, of trade, immigration, war. They're just leaving those there. Yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, the right wing's going to grab them, and, uh, and that's uh, not a good thing. Love your neighbors. Be conscious of everything. Keep stay informed. Hate some of your neighbors. Be ready to uh, take action if necessary. Go to meetings. Be be conscious in your life. Here we go. Thank you. This was KWMR Let's Talk Call-In Show with Paul Raphael and Charles Schultz. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank all our callers and listeners, and KWMR does not take a stand on any of the issues discussed on Let's Talk. Opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts and callers and don't necessarily reflect the views of KWMR, its board of directors, underwriters, or members.